assalamu alaikum students so we start with uh, the clinical orientation lectures uh, of the ecg first up is ecg changes when myocardium experiences ischemia and when that ischemia stays in uh, for a longer time or for some time it turns into infarction ischemia is lack of oxygen which can be a temporary thing which should be a temporary thing if there is a, a blocking of the coronary artery uh, or a branch of it uh, then uh, the the area of the myocardium that it supply or the area of the heart that this uh, artery supplies will become ischemic okay so blood flow will decrease or or stop hence the oxygen supply to this area will stop if this is not reversed in time then that area will die that particular area and we call it infarction so ecg changes obviously in ischemia and in and subsequently an infarction we'll start with the changes uh, in the in, in the in the heart uh, during ischemia so on this slide we'll learn why is ischemia such a bad thing for the myocardium uh, first just a little overall uh, uh, point uh, about ischemia how does it affect the myocardium uh, wherever there is an ischemic patch let's let's assume there's a patch of ischemia in the in the in the syncytium of the ventricles okay now the word syncytium means that if everything is normal it will function in coherence together in sync okay uh, both ventricles will nicely and beautifully contract together they get depolarized uh, in sync uh, the contraction during the plateaus that is in sync and they will repolarize in sync okay and they go into their refractory periods in sync everything is together connected now you have a nidus you have a you have a patch of ischemia what happens now this patch will not uh, be in sync with the rest of the of the of the myocardium or the syncytium so this particular nidus this particular area this patch will behave differently uh, first electrically followed by the mechanical event okay so its depolarization will be out of sync with the depolarization of the normal myocardium and its uh, uh, plateaus will be different its contraction will be uh, obviously in sync with its own depolarization and its repolarization will obviously be not in sync with the repolarization of the surrounding healthy muscle okay so what is exactly happening in this patch of ischemic myocardium this slide will hopefully explain that to you okay so this is in myocyte a cardiac myocyte we've taken one cell to explain at molecular level what what is the physiology behind ischemia so normally you know that intracellular potassium is more than extracellular potassium now what happens is uh, ischemia disturbs uh, the atp production how come well ischemia is decreased amount of blood flow uh, which brings in oxygen so there is oxygen defi deficiency in the cell in these hypoxic conditions atp uh, will not be produced to its normal level right and if atp is deficient this is where uh, probably this is something new that you have you will read today is that there is a potassium channel here it's called potassium atp as written here it locks in in the normal conditions when atp is in in normal uh, uh, at normal levels inside the cell it locks in your potassium inside the cell okay so it does not allow the potassium to leave out okay however when ischemia induced decrease in the oxidative phosphorylation at the at the mitochondria leads to decreased amount of atp this business gets disturbed okay and the locking mechanism now is uh, is 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 faulty and what happens is you have a uh, efflux of of potassium from inside to outside through this channel okay this is something uh, which normally does not happen okay so now the potassium will go out of the cell okay uh, which will increase the uh, amount of potassium here in the extracellular space okay there'll be more potassium which basically means that on the surface of your cell there will be more 
potassium charge, a uh, positive charge than usual. Okay, there's another way of saying it. Can we say that the RMP has been depolarized? Yes, we can. Why? Because the, the concept of depolarization is to make something more positive. You should know this by now, right? What we have done is we have made RMP more positive through this explanation and by leaking of potassium through this KATP channel, right? Okay, if you've understood this, adding to the insult is that um, the sodium potassium ATPase, of course, uses ATP and you have less ATP. So this pump will also not work. Okay, when this doesn't work, again, potassium gets trapped outside because it's this pump which brings in your two potassium in exchange for three sodiums outside. You know this. The net result of these two phenomena is accumulation of po uh, positive charge outside, which uh, disturbs the resting membrane potential, makes it more positive. Um, you know that the normal resting membrane potential is minus 90, but now it, is, it has become less negative or more positive. Okay. Now, secondly, this whole positivity also has an effect on, and you've done this uh, in the refractory period, uh, this <clears throat> delayed extended positivity, okay, will do what? Will basically uh, inhibit the sodium voltage gated channels on the membrane. When these fast sodium gated channels, which are by the way, responsible for the proper regular routine uh, depolarization of the cell, the quick one of the action potential, when these be start becoming inactive, then you have a problem in this uh, potential of this cell and you will, you can easily predict at this moment that that action potential will not be a normal action potential because let's say half of the sodium voltage gated channels have been knocked out by this abnormal uh, uh, quote unquote extra positive charged induced inhibition of these uh, voltage gated sodium channels. So if you are only working with half of uh, your channels, then obviously the upstroke will be will be half. Okay. So these cells will have a decle decreased amplitude of the entire action potential. Another point: as more ischemia happens, so when you have more ischemia, then this inhibition of the sodium potassium. Uh, uh, sodium uh, voltage gated channels will be enhanced at 55 minus 55 millivolts then uh, your entire sodium fast gated channels are out they have been deactivated knocked out now if this cell were to depolarize it will not be because of sodium ion channels it will be actually because of calcium uh, slow slow calcium channels and the L type uh, calcium channels. Okay. So let me just quickly recap the ischemia decrease the number of ATPs that uh, knocked this particular uh, potassium uh, channel, which is which is dependent on the ATP to be dysfunctional, which led to uh, the leakage of potassium to outside which increased the positivity on the surface of the cell. The RMP was decreased to less negative values, i.e. it was more positive, okay? Then the sodium potassium ATPase was also knocked out, which added to this extra uh, uh, potassium outside, which again added to the depolarization of RMP, okay? Please remember that the word is depolarization of the RMP. This is not the depolarization of the action potential. This is depolarization of RMP and it's called uh, ischemia induced slow depolarization. Okay. I hope you understood that. And the more the ischemia, uh, uh, the more sodium voltage gated channels get knocked out of the game because uh, their inactivation gates close at more positive voltages. You, you should know this from nerve and muscle. Uh, by minus 55, all of the sodium is knocked out. And then if you want to stimulate this cell, it will actually be depolarized, i.e. the action potential depolarization will occur due to the calcium 
uh, slow calcium channels. Okay. Uh, lastly, there will be early uh, phase three early repolarizations uh, in this cell uh, because when an action potential runs over this patch of uh, ischemic myocardium, uh, which is already leaking potassium outside, and now on top of it, you uh, you you give it the repolarization of the action potential, then of course excessive potassium goes out and uh, the the uh, through the uh, voltage gated potassium channels, and you have a lot of repolarization occurring, uh, which would have not have been there in a normal in a, in a normal cell. So this is attributed to the dysfunctioning of the KATP. Okay, and hence these cells go into early repolarization. Please note at this point that this is one of the key points in the inversion of T wave, which I will explain in a bit in the following slides. But just keep a note that this early repolarization messes up the ECG big time. So this is a summary of uh, all the stuff that we discussed. Look at these graphs, that the dotted graph is the one with the ischemic uh, tissue uh, in the backdrop of the normal uh, myocyte uh, graph, okay? Uh, you should compare, firstly, the difference between the RMPs, as we have discussed already, the RMP of the ischemic tissue will be higher to the normal RMP of the uh, healthy myocardium. And this, uh, we've discussed this already, it's more positive. Look at the amplitude, uh, this is uh, shorter, uh, the plateau is uh, less flatter, uh, the muscle is, the, the action potential goes into repolarization pretty quickly. Look at the breadth, if you, if you look at the decreased uh, uh, horizontal uh, distance between depolarization and repolarization as compared to the normal uh, distance, you will see that this is very small as compared to the normal, very broad uh, uh, distance between these two curves. And this is that early repolarization that we talked about at the end of the last slide. So this is an important point uh, to discuss before we dive into the ECG side and see how ECG is disturbed. Uh, please remember that ECG is disturbed because of this, because the action potentials are not in sync. That ischemic tissue has an abnormal action potential in a sea of normal myocardium with normal action potential. So obviously, when you now put a lead on top of an, a tissue which has an ischemic badge, then it will have, it cannot register normal ECG and it will deviate from that normal stuff, which is the point of this whole lecture. And before we go to the three uh, uh, very famous deviations of the ECG in ischemia, uh, I thought this is a nice flowchart for you to remember your uh, hierarchy of events. So the ischemic depolarizations that we discussed, uh, when they occur in atrial muscle, the Purkinje system, or the ventricular muscle, they lead to, uh, of course, uh, decreased conduction velocity and conduction blocks is what happens. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, when they occur in the AV nodal area, so if basically ischemia happens in this uh, AV nodal area, then it it, it leads to AV blocks. Okay, so now we have we have come to the point. Uh, so I write here acute ischemic induced changes uh, affect the ECG. Why did I uh, point out uh, the acute thing here? Well, because uh, as opposed to acute, there are also chronic changes uh, due to ischemia in the ECG. And uh, good news is we are able to tell which ones are the acute uh, changes, i.e., very fresh changes, uh, ischemic changes of the ECG as compared to the old ones um, uh, in the ECG. A little clinical backdrop is that a person who has, uh, who freshly has had uh, an ischemic attack or a myocardial infarction, commonly known as a heart attack, uh, this person's ECG will most definitely show one of or a combination of these uh, changes. While a person who had a, a, a old infarct, say five years ago, will have those type of chronic changes in the ECG, which will uh, cover in the latter part of the of this lecture. 